we still don't know where to put the stuff when it's, when it's done, when it's burnt. So a lot of innovation happens at the expense of uh, maybe the future or, or people. Um, I'm not being, I'm not being uh, against innovation here, I'm just saying that we have to always look at the various angles of innovation. I had it mentioned already that business needs innovation, and you'd be surprised how many innovations there are. You know, did you know you could buy a container to keep your bananas from being squashed? No, that's real innovation for somebody. I mean, they, for me, they are part of it, they all look like condoms, but uh, um, that may be my dirty one. But there's, I found half a dozen companies that sell a banana container, which until a few days ago I had no idea that even the market existed. But so that's in a, I know you and you know you and I probably agree that this is not going to advance mankind significantly. But then again, for these people, they make a market out of it. You know, somebody is busy making in China, making the molds. Somebody in America is doing the branding for it. Uh, so somebody's making a living out of innovation that that may be totally stupid for all of us uh, in this room, but it's still an innovation. So innovation doesn't always have to be you know earth shattering. Uh, the advancing mankind. It may just simply be advancing some little proxy company somewhere. Um, as, as long as there are school books, there's a need for banana bunkers, I can tell you. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure there is a need. You know, I happen to not actually like bananas, so I'm not the target audience. But I, took, I just think it's sweet that, that people would actually, uh, you know, probably use brainstorming techniques and whatever to come up with this product in the first place. To right. probably even create, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, Different well, size well we have, we have uh, European rules uh, how, how, to, how yeah. uh, bent bananas are, so that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, and one of the, that's why we make those standards so they fit in the containers, obviously. The same we have for potatoes and tomatoes, very sure. I mean, the, the square tomato, as we know, is not far away. Um, but innovation also has to be uh, appropriate to the technology applied. I mean, an example from my native Berlin, this is, I know it's 20 years ago, but obviously there was a, an issue there, this is the U-Bahn, the metro in Berlin, uh, an issue with technology uh, there, the, in this case, adhesive technology. The letters dropped off, uh, and they called this information, uh, which of course basically meant that people stayed outside and, and drove their cars, you know, because you don't want to be treated like this. But it's a little similar to actually using Belgian railways this morning, <coughs> not entirely um, pleasant. I couldn't pay, and so I, I, I took the train without paying, because I couldn't pay my three euros anyway. The machines were broken, the lines were too full, it was ridiculous. Anyway, so what, what, they, what we're basically looking at is, is this needs innovation, simply because it ain't working. So the innovation has, in this case, uh, a case for, for the end user to serve them better, uh, and to give them technology that is appropriate to the to the actual end user. So we tend to forget the end user more often than not. And we've heard this from everybody. You know, everybody can be an innovator. I mean, children can. I'm one of those children, by the way, or was the children. I could I could draw really well, and I still can. And I was too lazy for math. Now I write my own code because I'm, I'm obviously also a good coder. But it's much easier drawing. I got away with it at school because you know you don't have to do any homework, and uh, I did drawings instead always. Um, so everybody can be a, a, an innovator, which, you know, they are professional innovators, but essentially, uh, you know, innovators can be accountant, baker, in England you say, candlestick maker, they don't exist anymore. I'm not sure about uh, these people, though, because, um, uh, you know, um, <laughs> there, there, there are areas in the world where innovation has become a little bit of, a, of an issue. Um, <laughs> invent new financial products that they themselves didn't understand. And I certainly have no idea what a hedge fund is. Well, I kind of know what a hedge fund is. Um, you know, it's not a dirty word. It's a, you know, you're basically, you're, you're, you're betting on people's misfortune, which people at, uh, at races and things have always done. You can also bet on the loser, not just the winner. Uh, but all those financial inventions, innovations, as they call them themselves, of course, as we know, have, have caused a lot of damage, simply because there wasn't anybody there checking on those people. So innovation... In, you know, in the wrong hands and on its own can also be a dangerous thing. So that's why I'm, I'm glad in a way that, that institutions like the European community uh, looks after innovation because we know that there's enough people here to uh, make sure that this doesn't happen in the wrong hands. The trouble with innovation is um, that there are certain people who are professionals. You know, uh, if, you, if you asked around a couple of years ago, uh, the business consultants, the McKinsey's and Roland Berger's or whatever, they were the professional innovators because they, they came into companies and as I said before, I, I usually meet more business consultants there than, than employees. When I worked for the German Railways, Deutsche Bahn, 
uh, everybody there in the rooms were always employed by Roland Berger or McKinsey. There was never anybody from Deutsche Bahn there. Um, they owned innovation. The problem is they also have this sort of a, it's a, bit, it's a little bit like, like the banks, you know, they know uh, the, the, the road between death and life and uh, they sort of tell us that we are pretty stupid and uh, what do we know? Um, and, and in fact, their business is to make everybody appear fairly stupid. But the great thing about innovation is, and we've heard this you know, a few times today, that you, you don't have to be trained to be innovative. You just, uh, it's a talent, but it's something that you can, you can learn. But the most difficult thing is that you actually have to learn to cooperate. And, and a lot of people don't like that. Uh, they hate competition. They hate uh, to work with other people. You know, like, I'm a designer, so I say, I, I, say, I visualize. I'm not going to read long, long text. I'm not going to write code. I'm not going to go, go into math. I don't like engineers. That is a horrible attitude, which is prevailing. Uh, and the same goes for management consultants. You know, they're in the room, therefore they run the business, the meetings. They're up at the whiteboards and uh, they put up the little posters and, and they run those things. I think it's, that's really, really dangerous. And therefore, I think that designers can play a, a sort of um, a quite a while. I'll explain this in a second. Design is a. Um, I think design innovation are, 